It's not exactly the same though, because, no, because we're talking yeah. about 10 out of 10 it's projects not, that have you know, substantial pre-sales into the US, right? Yeah. And it can increase the budget, and of course you alone have to shoulder it. Can, it, it it's, it's, it's scheduling, you can't simulcast, so you can't go some places, let's say, that Christine can go. Well, to be clear, we can simulcast. Well, can. There, there is no regulation that says CBC, well, maybe the, what the newspapers would say. That, we're not, that we can't simulcast, but the problem with simulcasting is that it puts your schedule um, um, at risk to someone else's schedule, mm -hmm. right? So for example, if suddenly our US partner decided that they were going to move the show to nine o'clock or God forbid 10 o'clock, what would we do? Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and that's the problem for us with simulcasting is we don't have a schedule that would be flexible to changes in the U.S. schedule. It speaks to we need to be secure knowing that we love the show. Like ABC could have dropped Rookie Blue after three episodes, and we'd no longer have a simulcast. And it's the same with Combat. We have to know that we want this show no matter what. The simulcast is a big bonus, yeah. um, and it's a big bonus for all of us in terms of boosting ratings. But we've got all 13. We're not dropping it. So. It's a good point. Okay, I'm going to take a personal moment now. I used to love doing television <laughs> <Told you>. movies. <laughs> Wait. No, stop it, guys. Just get on the... <laughs> no, I love doing Collecting television money. movies. <laughs> they exchange drugs before the thing, and they're just catching up. So, <laughs> I love TV movies. And it's so hard to sell them. The audiences love television movie. And I know they're a pain in the ass to schedule and all that kind of stuff. But you know, they only cost three and a half million dollars as opposed to two point no, eight for a one I'm hour. Just with this two um, thing. <laughs> and it, it allowed us to tell some of the best stories that you know that 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 have happened in this country, whether there was social justice, whether it was in a lighter theme. Now, the only way you can tell it is if, you know, you can get a TV movie is you append the word Christmas to it. I want to do a Christmas. <laughs> so can we have our television movies back? No. No, thanks, okay. So. Well, do you know what? I can give you a two for one because we've got Johnny McDonald coming up. That's Canadiana and a TV movie. And that's going to be a series? No. It's okay, just kidding. Yeah. The one thing I will say that we adapted a strategy this past year um, with our drama budgets that we had, we had tried the one-hour pilots two years ago, um, and then we thought about doing that again this year, and you know we end up with three or four hours of programming that we are just sitting there because we didn't order the series. So we, in fact, chose to do two-hour backdoor pilots, so in a sense, movies. It's not the same thing. I, I realize that, but it's a movie, just so you know. Okay, let me just go around. Kevin, yeah, are we, you doing any movies? Yeah, we do TV movies. It's, a, it's definitely part of our appetite. Um, we, on the Family Channel side, limited, because obviously series are more flexible and we get more mileage out of them. And again, the, the other piece of the pie is we have to promote the movies. So to you know, mm. make, the, make the noise, especially for a pay service, it's hard to do. So we have to be careful, because we want to make sure we support the films properly. So Vacation with Derek was a good example. But we're very selective on the family side. Movie network, obviously there's an appetite ongoing. Uh, TV movies fit into the schedule, have flexibility with their originals uh, or with other partners have an appetite. Christine, how many movies a year? What can we expect? In terms of movies that we commission? Yeah. Well, we, we probably acquire probably, I don't know, seven to ten Canadian movies per year on the acquisition side. Um, and on the commissioning side, it really depends on what we need to pick up for that year. So it could be only a couple of them. Uh, but it's something we're open to. But as Christine said, they, they tend to become scheduling issues. Okay. Could, you, you know Kirsten, right? You've met her. Yeah. Could you talk to her that we in the audience would like more movies? Okay. Thank you. But you're not listening, Laszlo. I am you're listening. Not. <laughs> there's a, you are know, not. You know, we don't just say, eh, don't feel like movies. You know, we, we think about these things and we say, you know, we, we only have so many marketing dollars. That's the other thing we all know in this room. If you market it, you just have a much, much better chance of getting an audience. And, you know, we can only prioritize as A's and B's so many projects. So, you know, we are going to choose to prioritize the series because it's about bringing a loyal audience to you that will come back and come back and come back. And it, it doesn't make sense to us to put that time and effort into a one-off, at least from our point of view as a private broadcaster. Unless it's Christmas. 
Valentine's. Try Valentine's. You might yeah. get Valentine's, Valentine's through. No, you know. listen. No, uh, look. Not if it falls on a weekend. Well, what about a Halloween? No, that's true. What if it's yeah, on a weekend? No, it's a weeknight. And a Halloween? No, no, no. No, no, no. Halloween. No. Okay, I'm not going to belabor the point, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it alone. I'll, I'll move. It's okay. No, but listen. The, the <laughs> okay, if you don't belabor it, then move on. Okay, I'm going to move on. Um, here's a sensitive subject. Um, <laughs> forget the movie stuff. Um, I, I know other people have talked about it. For, for those of us who are in the business of making content and exploiting that content, uh, to the extent that you know we can build our companies, build assets that see us through hard times, because that's the whole point. Who owns what is a very, very important issue, and somehow we don't see ourselves as equals. We see ourselves, even the larger companies see themselves as vulnerable to uh, the broadcasters, because broadcasters tend to be larger, and they have power because they can actually order it. Now, I believe there's a terms of trade uh, negotiations ongoing, uh, partially because the CRTC wanted to see us be at peace with one another, working towards a national objective. It was tough to get going, but I hear, and what the, what, the, what the key issues are, are about ownership and how we're going to regulate the relationship between uh, the producers and the broadcasters. And it was hard to bring you guys to the table, but you're at the table now. So without being indiscreet, tell me how you feel, how it's going on in terms of trade, and, and what's the spirit that you took into in terms of trade um, I'll take this one, if you like. Um, <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> you know, I think it was interesting listening to both speakers today talk about, a, you know, consolidate, not consolidation, but collaboration and community and the need for working as partners. And you had us just now talking about working as partners with different broadcasters, whether they be US mm -hmm. or we all work with uh, British broadcasters and, and American cable broadcast partners as well, not just networks. But I think, I know we do, and I think we all need to talk about uh, our partnership with the independent community. And I know we approach um, the discussions of terms of trade as just that. How are we going to solidify our partnership and how are we going to make sure that we can work together in the next three to five years? It, it, it's almost like you can't even see beyond that. There's just so much unknown um, as we're hearing today. Um, and we approach it that way. In the same way, I'm sitting down with our whole sales team and our whole marketing ventures team and saying, how do we proceed as partners with advertisers? And what is the new relationship we need to forge with them? Because who gives you money for what and why and when is changing and has to change but, if our business is going to be successful. Isn't that, is, isn't that a new definition of what we're doing together? I, I thought you used to license my programs. You weren't my partner. I used to offer you a program and... I disagree. I disagree. I think, I've, well, I've always said this my whole career. Anytime you're in business with an independent producer, you're talking about a partnership until we sure. pay 100% of, of the financing. And I appreciate that. We are not paying 100% of the financing. So it is a partnership because there's financing that has to be raised and we're responsibilities and risks that have to be taken. So, of course, it's a partnership. Okay. All right. Just trying to get heat going. No. <laughs> it's not a partnership. I don't know what. <laughs> are, are, you, are you in talks? Well, uh, y yes, but, but different. Um, we already have a terms of trade agreement that was actually written in 2002. We were kind of the first out of the gate with it. And Can I point something out? I don't mean to interrupt you, but because when Kirsten referred to that, um, I was actually on the other side of the table with the CFTPA yeah. negotiating opposite Debbie Bernstein oh, yeah. for that terms of trade in June 2002. So I'm really experienced at terms of trade, just so you know. Go ahead, Christine. <laughs> so, so, uh, and, and so obviously it's time that we revisit it and we are, and okay. what basically we've done is we think that in order to have a partnership, because that's what we're talking about, we mm -hmm. have to understand what skin is in the game for everybody because I don't think we totally understand the business of the other. I mean, when, when we sat down, there always seems to be a notion in the, in the independent community that people are getting rich on these people's shows. And, and so when we sat down with people and said, you know what, we lose about 70% of everything we invest 
in these shows and any bit of money that we can get back from I don't know, I, iTunes sales or whatever, in fact, is a little bit more money that we can give to this production over here. It's not that anybody's getting rich on, on, on these revenues. Then we could come to a point where people could understand and we could sit down with them and say, oh, is that how your business works? Is that, is that how you, in the end of the day, come to a bottom line? Then we can start to understand. So basically, we're in a, um, kind of a process. We've uh, hired Nordicity to open up the books for us so that we can understand better how the partnership works. And we're hoping that that will lead us to a point where we can come to something that feels like a real partnership. See, that's going to be the key word, partnership. And with every good partnerships and, and marriage, Laszlo. Marriage, OK. Yeah. Some, some people are better at some things than others. You know? Like it's. <laughs> I thought we were just dating. Now. <laughs> no, I think we're she way past the dating She and I have been dating, dating you know, for 20 years. I don't know. Um, are you at that table? Yes, we are. Yeah, we, uh, we've recently been invited to the table, which is great. I think there's been a lot of hard work done by both sides that I think we benefit from, having looked at the materials with a pay perspective, which is maybe a little bit different. We want to make sure that whatever agreement's struck, that we that makes sense for from our perspective. Um, I think we, we believe very much in transparency and um, fair and balanced, you know, uh, agreement. Uh, we, you know, we, what, what, what is sometimes challenging is that we look to license the bundle of rights that we require to use during our use of the product and make sure that there's sufficient holdbacks because that's key to our, our um, business proposition as a premium service. So we have to make sure that that's respected. But being able to recognize that the technology changes uh, and evolves. And, you know, we, I think back to the movie network. You know, we, we started doing uh, HD programming back, to, back in 2000, launched an on-demand service in 2004, um, uh, an online service in 2009. We're always looking ahead and, and trying to figure out what the next thing is going to, you know, please our subscribers. So the relationship with the producer has to be in sync with that and re responsive to that. So I think if we can achieve that goal, that we have transparency and fairness, then I think we, it's a win-win. And, and the deadline is April the 1st or something? Is that, is that correct? I think there's a will to go into good. the hearings with a, a draft that agreement. That would be very good. I mean, I, I'll just, you know, I'll share with you, it, it's just everything that happens at once, and I'm not complaining, but uh, <laughs> in the next, um, you know, really six to eight weeks, the life of a broadcaster is extremely stressful. Uh, it's not that we don't want to pay attention to terms of trade as well, or the fact that all of our license renewals uh, come before the commission first weeks of April. But as you all know, it's also critical months for ordering shows. Yeah. So we're just trying to make sure we bounce we're, we're all the balls. We're sympathetic up to a point, but, yeah, but, I know. but you know, the terms of trade negotiations have been going on for Absolutely. a while. You could have come sooner. Like timed it differently. Mm -hmm. that, that's where partnership comes in. That's where mm -hmm. partnership yeah. comes in. Okay, I want to get to another subject before fist fights break out on the stage, <laughs> which I would lose, by the way. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about, you know, I've done these shows, uh, the the co ventures, the six out of ten. Uh, I never understood that part of broadcast where it's not driven out of envelope. You just sort of reach into some kind of secret pocket that you have somewhere, you know, to do a show like Haven, for instance, mm -hmm. or Skins that uh, we did with you. And they're very helpful and, and, you know, we as producers are happy to deliver a bargain. But is there a danger that it's going to take over other forms? Of, where does this money come from that you use? I think, I think you're mi mixing up, uh, when we talk about CPE, Canadian Production Expenditure, yes. and our CMF envelope, they're of course very different things. The CPE is the budget that we have to work with to commission and acquire Canadian programming to fill our schedules, uh, because they need to be filled. You know, uh, the Shaw Media Drama CMF envelope allowed us to do three dramas this past year. Three full, like you can do the math, and it's all transparent, it's on the CMF mm -hmm. website. Um, and we need to do a lot more than three. So that's great, that's one model. And we just need to have at least two or three models of how to finance different Canadian dramas. Um, the CMF model only being one of them, so. 
Hence, okay. when an opportunity comes along like Haven, yes. uh, of course, if it's again, if it's a show we think will work, and we do think it, we did think it would work, and it did work on Showcase, uh, we'll step in as the Canadian broadcaster. Absolutely, it's a whole different financing model than the Rookie Blue model. But you know, I just want to say from my recent experience from E1 that. Uh, you know, uh, the panelists said it earlier that it's a completely different scene. People arrive on the Canadian shores, not just looking for, you know, uh, a service producer who's going to get them a cup of coffee and a bed to sleep in and a great hotel, but they arrive with some respect. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are coming, and of course the challenge for all of us is to stay working and to bring as much original programming to the networks mm -hmm. as we can. Where do you get your cash? Yeah, I, I would concur. <laughs> uh, actually, it's a little known fact that uh, Astral also owns the keg, and we use the money from the hamburgers towards uh, Canadian production. Restaurants. Um, it, you know, similarly, we, we look at the, our CMF envelope and we make sure that we leverage that to the maximum. We want to make sure that we utilize all of that uh, towards our original productions because obviously it raises the budget, maybe, maybe not to the level of 2.8, but, uh, you know, 2.9. Uh, so, you know, obviously we try to 3. leverage 4. that. 3.4. Yeah, 3.4. Every, every yeah. financing uh, scenario is different. Uh, once that's maximized, we look to uh, what other productions make sense in partnerships. So something like Skins would fit into yeah. that. 